What is this? Natural Vision Evolve. I honestly... It's hard to tell how much better it looks compared to the previous the things released. I'm not saying it looks bad, it's just like... It's almost like there's like a cap on how much you can keep improving. It does look... The parallax interiors looks... That, I mean... Hmm. Volumetric clouds? I mean, that's actually kind of sick. Is this the first... Oh, new lights? Animated sound. Okay, actually, this seems like... If this hasn't ever been in GTA... This pretty, is actually a pretty big fucking deal. That looks like a bunch of shit added. If this is all stuff, like, this is the first time someone's done volumetric clouds. That was a sick fucking trailer, man. That's how they should, uh... <laughs> Some of these other games should do their fucking trailers. That was sick. Flight Sim Ultra Realism on RTX 3090. Bullshit, he gets like 10 FPS. Even my computer barely handles it. RTX 3090 with $100 graphic mods. When he says $100 graphic mods, isn't, isn't it the stuff you buy in the Microsoft store? No way. This is this is probably the stuff that enhances the certain cities, right? International Airport. Yeah. What the fuck? It will start in the sequence. Starting engine two. Consume your own alcohol that you may have brought aboard. It's okay to have it. Just wait till you get to Miami or Baltimore, wherever you're going today, to drink it. We do have Diet Coke, Coke, 7 Up, and water for you today. We're going to take your orders and get you some soda at least, finally. No, but we never anticipated a changing habit. Does this guy just make like very immersive? Flight sim game, uh, like a, it's like a full flight simulated almost. That's actually kind of cool. That's a solid fucking idea. You go from start to finish, kind of like simulate a flight. That's actually kind of sick. That's a great idea. It looked like uh, the editing in the beginning. That was kind of cool too. You kind of, like, see the passengers slowly enter the plane. Wait, a hundred dollars of graphics mods. Some of these shots, I don't remember, uh, <laughs> Flight Sim 
Maybe, did they have like a San Diego HD update or something? Because all the graphic increases uh, that you have to spend money on in this game, it's all like HD textures close to the land. Engaging autopilot. That's kind of sick though. I like this guy's YouTube channel. It's a cool vibe actually. Mods provide maps, cams, etc. Yeah, it looks real enough. No, it's like a 22 minute. Uh, unless this is just the only video. I don't know if he does like multiple flyovers. You can see a list of the add ons in the description. Scenery, Fly, Tampa, Boston, San Diego, Four Season Pack, Tree Mods, Aircraft, Camera Movement, Track IR5. Oh. Color Correction. I have added color correction effects for a more realistic effect. SoFly, Weather Presets, AIG Traffic, FS Realistic Course, Sky Dolly, Flight Control Replay. I mean, yeah. Not, SoFly, Weather Presets? This isn't really changing it. These are just like presets of the weather system in the game. AIG traffic. I don't know what FS realistic core is. I mean, eh. Nah. I've worked on the avionics for 737 like this. Buys hundreds of dollars of games on Sub Sunday, but this is a waste. I, d I wasn't referring to it being a waste. I'm just saying it's an exaggeration on the title. A hundred dollar worth of graphic mods. It's not like massive graphic changing mods. Is what I'm getting at. You can get something close to this with the base version of the game, is what I'm saying. Because the game naturally already looks this good. The biggest thing is the upgrades on, like, the city views. Like, do you have to pay for San Diego HD? Notice how he's flying constantly low to the ground. Some of them are free updates. Some you do, some you don't. And the upgraded airports. It is fucking crazy though, man. Like the... Uh, plain add-on is $70. What? For the 730... I thought there was a 737 in the game. I swear I flew a 737. Oh, 747. It's almost 100% identical to the real one, even has failures. I'm just saying, whatever. Wow, 70 bucks for it. I mean, shit, bro. At the end of the day, this game, I mean, you know. This game's like a fucking technical goddamn fucking marvel.
Imagine playing this game on that 55-inch Samsung. The landing. The landing. God damn. It's the Airbus A320? Oh. God damn. No, this game runs way better in single player, doesn't it? It's still like super demanding. Like look at, dude, the city, it looks so fucking real. Even though, sure, he added some color correction or whatever to make it look more real. It, it's, it's insane. It doesn't use Google Maps, right? Doesn't it use, like, Bing Maps or some shit? 500. Whatever, though. Oh, such a fucking beautiful game, bro. Now, all we need is a game where the traffic that you see isn't AI, it's actually players transporting goods. Actual players driving. That's what you need now. It's the next step. Euro truck sim, flight sim. Combine them. It's called real life. Yeah, but it's more fun playing it on your computer. Look better when you were up in the sky. Pull up, pull up, a pull up, a pull up. Pull up, a pull up. A pull up. Yeah, man, fucking beautiful. There is a mod for Google Maps. Yeah, but whatever. It doesn't really matter. Bing Maps, you know, lol Bing Maps, but you know, at the end of the day, it does the fucking trick. Still looks like San Diego. Whether it's Google Map, like, okay, what exactly is Google Maps gonna change if you decide to use Google Maps? And the fact that there is a mod is interesting. It just seems kind of random. Ugh! It's Bing Maps enhanced by Microsoft Azure. Hey, yo, once again, fun fact, the devs of this game are the devs of this game. Both are Sobo Studios. Isn't that fucking, that's fucking crazy. I love the dynamic. Totally different fucking games. But this has its own crazy tech where they're allowed, they're allowed to, you can see so many fucking rats on your screen using whatever fucking shit they do to make that shit work and then on this side they have a flight sim game they made too that's what's cool about this studio it's like literally two polar opposite games what is this shit oh wait we've seen this i've seen this uh, uh, okay fine this game looks decent actually this, lo this looks kind of cool But like you, you like rebuild shit. Or like you point it at an object and it brings it back in time or something. Huh. What is this? Hello! Oh, very nice to meet you. Why did you jump out at me like that? My name is Astra. I am a puzzle exercise assistant. Or P, for short. Wait, a what? You are now in possession of a handheld entropy device, capable of rewinding objects into the past. Give it a try. Oh, yeah, it's actually... Well done. You did great. Deploying emotional support. Hmm. Okay. 
Yeah, this actually looks pretty cool. Puzzle element introduction. Jump cubes. Stand on jump cube to launch yourself upwards. Happy jumping! Note, jumping onto a jump cube from a higher area will spring you further. Just remember to bend your knees when you land. Yeah, this game looks pretty sick. Plague Tale Gameplay Overview. Yeah, when does this game drop again? October? Oh, I can't wait to play this game, man. I hope it's good. This is the last thing I want to watch on this game, and then I'm ready for release. No more. I don't want to see anything else, Sosobo. It's the last... I knew it! I knew it! No more. Right. Move quick. Far across the sea, an island calls. The thing ever stays nice. It always turns bad. Things aren't always nice. You can change them. How? The way we always do. We fight. I want to see fucking thousands of rats. How far will you go to save the ones you love? A Plague Tale Requiem picks up a few months after the end of Innocence, right around the first days of summer. Amicia and Hugo are headed south, along with their mother Beatrice and the young alchemist Lucas, reaching places still spared by the devouring plague. Wait, when the fuck do they meet the mother? I don't remember that. The raging wars and the rabid rats that are running rampant in the north. I thought the parents were dead. Is that a Beneath the warm sun of 14th century Provence, the Daroons are almost able to enjoy a normal life. You're great! Yeah! But for a recurrent dream that Hugo has been having of a mysterious island that calls him. These look like teeth. It's a two teeth island. Nobody noticed their disappearance. Maybe nobody cares. Maybe. One day, the macula illness that's been dormant inside Hugo awakens, and the dreaded living nightmare begins Yo, again. This, seems, this feels more like it's spoiler heavy. In the wake, Amicia finds herself with no other choice but to trust her brother's dreams and head further south towards the elusive island before he's consumed by the terrible macula affliction. The bite. Yes. They've knocked the arena down. They let them die here. Oh, this game is going to be such Starting a fun playthrough. Her mind is made up. She will find a cure in what dreams and prophecy yeah, might Yeah, yo, hold. fuck this shit. This shit's, almost... fucking, this shit's fucking spoilers, man. This ain't a fucking gameplay overview. This is a fucking TLDR of what you're about to play. I think the coolest part about this game was it was like... It came out of nowhere. It was just like... Ah, let's see if this game's good. And it was like, whoa, this game looks great. The voice acting's good. It was fucking cool. It was just like... Really, it was just like solid. <coughs> Literally a game you just go in with no expectations. And they deliver. So, that's why I just really, I just really love this game. It's just sick. Uh, and then like the tech they use on the rats is fucking crazy. All right, what do we got in Rumbleverse? Season one. Season one. What are the skins looking like? The chicken's back. And a hazmat suit. Nah. There's lots of heavy hitters in today's game. Nah. I think we're in for a treat. Oh, breathtaking. Yes. They ate. They ate.
bad. Maybe with the stash. This competitor has really pushed their mind and their body to the limits. I guess you could go with the chicken head, but everybody's gonna be rocking the chicken head. We playing this shit, bro. What the fuck are you talking about, man? The fuck is wrong with you, dude? Do you know if they're gonna do a ranked mode? I doubt it. I doubt it. Are they adding armor plates? Fuck no, dude. No, no. She. 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 MMO Untamed Isles development paused by studio after they spent the Kickstarter funds on crypto. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh no. Yeah, right here. Embracer Group. They got the uh, enters into agreement to acquire IP rights to the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit. Embracer Group. What the fuck does Embracer own? I know they, um, they own, T I know they own THQ Nordic. I know that. I didn't realize these guys were that fucking loaded. I didn't realize they were that fucking insane. They own, like, a couple of different development companies, but, like, about us? Where's the list of all the games they, uh, our studios... THQ Nordic play on is play on the devs of Saints Row. Saints Row. Play on they look like Saints Row. Lol. I don't know. Coffee stain amplifier saber. Oh, they oh my god, dude. They're the ones. Wait, who developed Evolve? Oh yeah, it's not on fucking Steam. Who made Evolve? I thought Saber made Back for Blood. Isn't Saber Back for, uh, Evolve? Decca, Gear, oh, they own Gearbox. Easy Brain, Asmodi, Dark Horse Media. Yeah, like, this company, this, they're like, they're not, they don't own that much shit. Like, they own some notable games, but nothing, like, fucking massive. Like, they, uh, I, I'm pretty sure Gearbox is massive to an extent. The studios they own? Nah, man. Like, obviously, Borderlands is huge. And, but, like, that's the only thing that comes out of Gearbox. What the fuck else? Oh, wait, what the hell? Oh, my God, dude. Embracer has acquired the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit IP rights. This includes motion pictures, video games, board games, merchandising, theme parks, and stage productions relating to the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit. What the fuck? Wait, they have their... Oh, 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 I see. Holy shit, dude. Wait, what the fuck? They own so much. Jesus. They literally own like 45% of this pie. Damn. Okay, what what's notable here though? Hold up. Fuck, hold up. Let me uh old image they own new uh more studios now. They also own Eidos and Crystal Dynamics, which is um Tomb Raider shit. Bugbear, I know Bugbear has some indie games. I forgot what they made. I remember Bugbear, though. Tarzir Studios? Aren't those the people behind Plague Tale? Isn't Tarzir, Plague Tale, and some other shit? Is that Tarzir? No, that's a Sobo. What the fuck? What has Tarzir made? They sound familiar. Um... Oh, wait. Little Nightmares was Tarzir?
I think because it was made, they will always have the rights to the movie. Sure, but I don't think they're going to be able to then apply any of the characters or anything from Lord of the Rings in any other future project. So that's why they wouldn't put Gandalf into fucking multiverses. This will be interesting. I mean, shit. I mean, it, it doesn't make sense for... I feel like it doesn't make a lot of sense for any of these companies to get the Lord of the Rings IP. Plus, it wasn't... Unless they go, like, fucking ham and make an insane game, like, Microsoft buys the IP and then they go fucking crazy with it. Um, I It kind of makes sense with Embracer's portfolio that they decided to buy it. I kind of see it more. It would be cool. I You know, but, like, they didn't just buy the rights to it. They literally bought fucking everything. Motion pictures, video games, board games, merchandising, theme park, stage production. Jesus. I wonder who's going to get tagged to make a game. Has acquired limited run games, Sing Tricks, Tuxedo Labs. Oh shit, they bought Tripwire Interactive as well. I actually was wondering what Tripwire's next game was going to be. Killing Floor was always a fun game. Yeah. Killing Floor 2 as well. I remember, like, looking forward to Killing Floor 2 when it was, uh, they were showing it off. I don't know if this game still holds up, but... Um, yeah, what the fuck is Tripwire up to? Wait, Tripwire is chivalry? The fuck? No, 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 they publish. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Torn Banner. So it's like an umbrella, essentially. Tripwire owns a bunch of other studios. Was Maneater in-house? Yeah, but like, see, they're a publisher, but they also make their own games. Like, Maneater was a pretty cool game. And this was like in-house Tripwire that made it. But like, I would consider this like a double-A game. All of Tripwire's games are double-A. Even the studios under them are pretty double-A. I mean, they haven't made too many games. Red Orchestra, Killing Floor, Killing Floor 2, Rising Storm 2, Vietnam was actually a pretty sick game. And then Maneater. Maneater was well received, and then Chivalry 2 under the Torn Banner. It's always super interesting seeing how all these fucking Lego pieces move around. Always interesting. Because that means shit is happening that means hey i wonder how much they fucking spent on it but it, it means that i don't i know i i'm kind of like a lord of the rings fanboy but it's because the ip is is so ripe for adaption there's not many let's be real here there's fucking star wars lord of the lord of the rings the, the, what are the notable universes? Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter that span generations. Those are like the three. Sure, Marvel, but Marvel's like a collection. No, I don't think Narnia is on the same level. Warhammer is not on the same level of what I just mentioned. You're fucking high. It's so rare that something, an IP that spans generations is made. It's absolutely fucking rare. Star Wars, you literally heard of your dad's fucking... Your, your, your dad's dad. No, that's not true. Yeah, no, your dad... Yeah, no, yeah, your fucking dad's dad like Star Wars. And it spans generations. Lord of the Rings spans generations. Harry Potter spans generations. Game of Thrones does not span generations. Even though that is... A solid, you know, world that is built out. It's so fucking rare. But we'll see, man. Who knows? Maybe in like two, three years, you're going to hear about a crazy-ass Lord of the Rings game coming out. Or they're going to tag like five different studios under Ember. And they're going to be like, hey, all five of you guys make a Lord of the Rings game. Kind of like how Star Wars is going about. How there's like, how many fucking studios are making Star Wars games right now? It's not like one 
there's like four or five Star Wars games in development. I actually, that's probably exactly what's going to happen. We shall see. All garbage? I don't know. I think Star Wars Eclipse looks the most interesting. But apparently they're having trouble finding developers or something. <laughs> 